Welcome to another screencast where this time, hopefully, here we go, well, I'll be discussing uh, larynx, trachea, and the bronchi. So by the end of this, uh, you should be able to identify, describe, and explain here the structure and the function of the larynx, the trachea, the bronchi, and the bronchioles. Uh, and then how the structure of each of these is related to their function. And then uh, a little bit about the relationship between the epiglottis, the larynx, and the esophagus, and uh, that intersection of the, of the food tube and the air tube. Um, and then a little bit about here how the larynx produces uh, vocalizations right, or sound and speaking. So let's get started. In a previous screencast, we had seen this uh, sagittal section or mid-sagittal section through the, through the head here, and we dealt with kind of everything uh, in the, 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 the upper, upper respiratory, so nasal conchi here, the pharynx, et cetera. And we've gotten air down to uh, this laryngopharynx here. So the air then will move from the laryngopharynx into uh, the airway, the main airway, which is going to be the, the trachea. So this opening, this opening here, uh, from the laryngopharynx down into the trachea is, is the glottis, right? Uh, there is this very prominent piece of cartilage here known as the epiglottis, and so this is cartilage. And this epiglottis, when we swallow a piece of food, uh, the tongue here and the muscles will push this epiglottis back over as well as this um, trachea, sorry, this larynx here, this thyroid cartilage, uh, will, ra whoops, will raise up this way uh, and essentially close off this airway so that will, that epiglottis will cover over here. This is, this is flexible here, right? So it covers over and then the food bolus goes down uh, the esophagus here and not down the airway or water. Um, so if you had a, a piece of food go down through here, then it might get stuck in the trachea. Uh, if you had water go down there, uh, the, there are sensors, sensory cells lining this trachea here that will detect that and not like that and force you to cough uh, so that you have air pressure moving this way that will then dislodge that piece of food or that, that water, right? Um, so, Let's go take a closer look here at the detail of the, uh, of the larynx. So the larynx uh, routes air and food appropriately and plays a role in the vocalization. So here we see this anterior view of the larynx. And we're looking at a male here because this the very prominent piece of cartilage, the thyroid cartilage here, uh, thyroid means shield. And so if you look at this anterior view, this kind of looks like a shield. And in males, this ridge right here uh, becomes very pronounced uh, at puberty. Testosterone affects cartilage growth in many places, and one of the places that affects it is, to, is here. So this enlarged thyroid cartilage in males uh, compared to females is prominent. You can probably palpate that. Uh, that is a touch it or feel it on your own, on your own neck there. Uh, the other piece of uh, cartilage that is prominent and uh, that is important is this cricoid cartilage here, right? that cricoid cartilage. And the uh, cricoid is ring-shaped, right? so this goes all the way around. Uh, so if we look at this posterior view here, uh, this cricoid cartilage forms a complete 360-degree circle around, right? around, that, um, around that larynx. The thyroid cartilage, in contrast, does not go all the way around. You have this, um, there's an open space here, and this open space is where uh, the esophagus would be. So the esophagus has been removed in this posterior view here. There's another slide that will show that a little bit better. The other, the third prominent piece of cartilage, again, is the epiglottis that we refer to in the other uh, slide. And you don't see it on the anterior view here a little bit. You see the, the, the top of it. Uh, because it's being hidden by this hyoid bone, right? So uh, this hyoid bone anteriorly, posteriorly, here's the epiglottis, and then um, the esophagus would be, would be removed here. So if we look down through and get um, a, uh, a superior view, uh, this, is, this is what it would look like if you were looking through uh, a scope, 
right? If you had taken a little camera and stuck it down the nasal cavity, down through the uh, nasal pharynx, the, the oropharynx, and then the, the, the laryngopharynx, right? So let me go back a slide here. So you take a little camera and insert it this way down here. You're looking sort of right uh, here, looking at this angle so that you can see uh, through the epiglottis, so again, so anterior, posterior, here you'd be easy to visualize the epiglottis right here. And then you see the opening, uh, this is the glottis. This is this, so the glottis is like the uh, pupil, right? It's not actually a structure, it's an, it's an opening. Uh, so the pupil was, is defined by where the iris is. So we have this muscle, there's the iris, right, the muscle around there, and then there's the, there's the pupil, the opening. What forms the border of the glottis then are the uh, true vocal cords and this false vocal cord, this fold. And these uh, are uh, connective tissue pieces that are, are strung between these other pieces of cartilage, right, this uh, corniculate and cuneiform and then the uh, retinoid cartilages here. So suffice it to say that these vocal cords here, when the glottis is open, um, are far apart. When they are close together, the glottis is, is closed. So uh, when air is moving across these vocal cords, they will vibrate. And we'll watch these footages in, uh, in class here. Um, they're pretty wild of watching these vocal cords vibrate back and forth uh, to produce sound, okay? So uh, a little bit about the larynx. Incidentally, all of these uh, cartilages are supported by uh, ligaments that are spanning here from the hyoid bone to the cartilage, right? And so these, uh, this hyoid bone, you can actually palpate this uh, a little bit. It, it's, uh, it's difficult, but you can do it, and it might be a little painful, so I'm not encouraging you to do that, but you, some of you might be able to feel that hyoid bone. I can show you in class uh, sort of where that is and, and how, to, how to do that. Uh, just another, uh, it, we'll watch this animation in class where you can go on and click on it on the, uh, the, the PowerPoint and run the PowerPoint from, from Blackboard there and watch the animation just of, of the swelling. But this is sort of a stop action view of what I was trying to talk about before in terms of the, the epiglottis here, uh, the, the larynx being raised up and the epiglottis covering it and then there's that food bolus. So that's physically preventing that food bolus from going down. Uh, the larynx here down into the uh, into the, the, the trachea. Uh, notice that the uvula here, that, that very posterior part of the uh, soft palate is closing off the, uh, the, the uh, nasal pharynx here so you don't get any food or water going up this way either. Right? And so after you swallow then uh, the, the epiglottis returns to its position and you begin to breathe again. So once, we, once the air makes it past uh, the larynx, uh, it's going to move into the trachea and then down into the two different bronchi. Uh, so these bronchi, there's a, these are primary bronchi. Uh, there's a uh, right one and a left one. And then you move into the secondary lobar uh, bronchi and then the tertiary, the segmental bronchi. So they just keep getting smaller and smaller in diameter until you get to these terminal bronchioles uh, um, that are the smallest uh, diameter uh, air tubes. Right? So let's take a little bit of a detailed look at the trachea here. The trachea is, uh, a, is an airway and it is supported by these C-shaped rings of cartilage. So uh, this is the tracheal cartilage, this is hyaline cartilage. So when you look at the slides back there, um, there'll be hyaline cartilage slides. And you notice that these are C-shaped rings or sometimes uh, U-shaped, but most often described as, as a C-shaped ring. So the posterior part here, so this is posterior, right? This is anterior, this cross-sectional view. Uh, I was referring to where the esophagus was. Again, that's posterior to the, to the trachea there. So there's uh, these ligaments that are involved here, but this C-shape is significant because when, this, when you swallow a food bowl, it's going to go down this esophagus, and the esophagus is going to get wider in these directions, right? And if the cartilage went all the way around, then uh, 
you'd have a difficult time swallowing food, right? So when that large food bowl goes through the esophagus, expands this way, and then that allows the this C-shaped ring, this C-shaped cartilage to uh, sort of flex a little bit, right? And get a little bit wider there, right? Uh, notice that there's this mucous membrane here that is lining that uh, lining that C-shaped ring of cartilage as well. So these C-shaped cartilage rings uh, are in the uh, trachea, they are in the primary bronchi, and they're even down into the secondary bronchi. So these are helping to hold open or keep patent the, uh, the airway. Without these cartilage rings here, um, you would, th these airways would collapse, right? So there's air here and there's air pressure you can sort of hear when you exhale, that air pressure would go down, and the external pressure uh, from the chest here would sort of collapse that, that airway, and this is what you do not want to have happen there. So these C-shaped rings of cartilage help hold, that, hold those airways wide open. Right? Um, the branching here, the bronchi, is not even. This uh, right bronchus is at a little bit more of a steep angle um, then, so this angle is a little more steep than this angle here on the left. So this is a, a greater, this is a little bit more obtuse, this angle. Um, so consequently, if you did get a piece of food or dust or something that made it all the way down here, the tendency is for that blockage to go here uh, into the right lung area and not into the left lung because this is a little bit straighter down. So if something's falling, it's going to fall straight down this way and not so much at an angle over here. Right? But if you did that... Um, you get this blockage, and then you get the Heimlich maneuver, which we can talk about in another screencast or in, in class. Okay. So um, just a little bit there, uh, a lot of detail rather, about the structure and function of the larynx, uh, the trachea, and the bronchi. We'll deal with bronchioles in another screencast, a little more uh, minute uh, or microscopic anatomy there. So we'll be talking about the structure of each of those and how that's related to their, their function and the relationship between the epiglottis, the larynx, and the esophagus when you're swallowing food or water, and then just a little bit about how the larynx produces these vocalizations. Okay, uh, thanks for listening, and bring your questions to class.